the presence of a stone anywhere in the urinary tract is referred to as urolithiasis. The most common location for stone formation is the kidney itself. The stones located in the kidney are referred to as renal calculi or kidney stones. The medical term for this disorder is nephrolithiasis. The formation of stones in the ureters, called ureteral calculi, is referred to as ureterolithiasis. 75% of all stones are made of calcium salts such as oxalates or phosphates. Uric acid, struvite, and cysteine are also components, but are less common. An obstruction anywhere in the urinary tract will compromise the flow of urine and can result in urinary stasis and damage to the renal tubules. Urinary stasis predisposes the client to infection and renal tubular damage decreases glomerular filtration. Most clients who have renal calculi have some risk factors. The most common risk factors are inadequate hydration and disorders that increase urine calcium. Let's review the risk factors. Dehydration, hypercalciuria, immobilization, hyperparathyroidism, high protein intake, high sodium intake, and urine acid base imbalance, either acidic urine, which predisposes to uric acid stones, or alkaline urine, which predisposes to calcium phosphate stones. The most common symptom of acute renal calculi is the sudden onset of severe flank pain. This development is referred to as renal colic. The location of the pain commonly reflects the location of the stone and will change as the stone moves along the urinary tract. Let's review all of the signs and symptoms. A sudden onset of severe flank pain, tenderness at the costovertebral angle, pain located where the stone is, urgency, a burning sensation with urination, hematuria, nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain, though seldom. The goals in treating renal calculi are preservation of renal function and prevention of infection. Most renal calculi pass spontaneously and the client simply needs oral or IV fluids, pain management, antiemetics, and ambulation. Traditional antibiotic therapy should be initiated when urinary tract infection is present. While treatment may vary a bit depending on the type of stone, in general, clients with stones should increase their fluid intake to at least 3 liters per day and limit dietary consumption of oxalates and sodium. Some specific guidelines for diet modification are For a low oxalate diet to prevent calcium stones, limit dark grains, nuts, chocolate, vitamin C, and include a moderate calcium intake, 2 servings per day. For a low sodium diet, limit sodium to 2 grams per day. For a low purine diet to prevent uric acid stones, 2 moderate meat servings per day. Also, reduce protein and citrus and take allopurinol, trade name Xyloprim, as prescribed to prevent the formation of uric acid. If the client is unable to pass the stone spontaneously through the urinary tract, additional treatment will be necessary. Extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy is used to deliver shock waves through skin cushioned by water. This process breaks up the stone so that the client can pass it spontaneously or it can be removed via an endoscope. Nephrolithotomy can be performed through the use of a percutaneous needle. With the client under general anesthesia, ultrasound guides needle access to the renal pelvis and the stone. Dilators are passed over the needle guide wire until the stone is visualized. The stone is then broken up by ultrasound or lithotripsy and a stent is inserted. Ureteroscopy is often used when the stone is located in the ureter. The stone is visualized by the scope, the stone is removed, and a stent is placed. In caring for a client who has renal calculi, you must be attentive to three major areas, pain management, infection, and renal function. For pain management, assess pain location, severity, and quality using a pain scale ranging from 0 to 10. Administer analgesics, narcotics, and NSAIDs. Monitor the client for pain relief and any adverse reactions to analgesics. And try to alter the client's perception of the pain by using music or teaching-focused breathing techniques. For urinary tract infection, 
assess for signs and symptoms of UTI, such as elevated temperature and WBC count, chills, diaphoresis, frequency, and urgency of urination, urinary incontinence, and abdominal tenderness. Get a clean catch specimen for urine culture and sensitivity if infection is suspected. Use aseptic technique for nephrostomy tube dressing changes, promote regular hydration and voiding, administer antibiotics as prescribed, and be sure to teach the client and family about the signs and symptoms of UTI. To monitor renal function, check intake, output, and daily weight. Monitor serum creatinine and BUN, check for drainage bag patency, and reposition if applicable. And teach the client about dietary modifications that help keep new calculi from forming.